uh, if uh, we have a question like this, how many strings of length R can be found from the uppercase letters of the English alphabet? Uh, uh, combination can appear difficult, but Majidik to Buche Kora Chestakuri, break Koreni Kora Chestakuri, then uh, most of the problems you'll be able to solve. Uh, there are uh, still some problems which are very formula driven, uh, but um, apart from that, that is only maybe 5% of the problem. Apart from that, you can uh, apply your simple understanding of sum and product and the permutation combination formulas and we'll be able to solve complex problems. <clears throat> so, problem how many strings of length R can be formed from the uppercase letters of English alphabet. Uh, so, first first question is that is it, a, is it a, a permutation problem or is it a combination problem? Okay, so this is the first uh, question. Okay. Mm. So, for... Uh, <clears throat> Priyanshu and uh, Mohua, we are just discussing this problem that how many strings of length R can be formed from the uppercase letters of English alphabet. Uh, so, uh, of course, it is a, uh, of course, it is a permutation problem. Why? Because we are talking about strings, right? So, in a string, the order matters, right? So, if I have a word PAT and we have TAP, we are using the same letters, but these two strings are different, right? So this is a permutation problem. And what is so different over here? Okay, so uh, you you remember that when we are when we are maybe uh, talking of uh, let's say that the photo frame problem, right? The photo frame problem that how many ways we can arrange a uh, few people in front of uh, uh, arrange few people for a photo. Uh, now uh, there was no option that if i have already chosen a boy i i cannot choose him again but <clears throat> there is no limitation like that over here there is no limitation like that over here so you have unlimited number of a's unlimited number of b's unlimited number of c right so in that case uh, if i have to find uh, such a uh, such number then uh, essentially uh, you know, you can think like this, that you have maybe R positions. So each position can be filled up in 26 ways because it, these are all uppercase letters, right? So these are all uppercase letters. So you can fill uh, each one of them in 26 ways. So it will be ultimately 26 to the power R, right? So this is a permutation where repetition is allowed. Okay. Now, let's look at uh, uh, another uh, uh, problem. And, and so the generalization is that the number of R permutation of a set of N objects with repetition allowed is N to the power R. Because you have R positions and each position you can fill up in, uh, you can fill up in uh, N ways, right? So, you know, N multiplied R times, so N to the power R. Okay. All right. Now, let's... Uh, look at another problem. So, <clears throat> look at this very uh, this problem very carefully. How many ways are there to select four pieces of fruit from a bowl containing apples, oranges, and pears if the order in which the pieces are selected doesn't matter? So, if I am selecting, you know, apple earlier or uh, orange earlier, it doesn't matter. And uh, even if even if uh, they would not have uh, told it it's by common sense thing that in a in a fruit bowl okay in, in in a fruit bowl or maybe you know you are having having some food and you are putting some something there so you put the rice earlier or you put the dal earlier it doesn't matter right ultimately you are having rice and dal so from the problem context you have to understand that whether it is a uh, permutation or a combination but here uh, of, to make things simple for you, it is given in the problem that if the order in which the pieces are selected doesn't matter. Okay, <clears throat> now there is another important piece. It says only the type of fruit and not the individual pieces matter. Okay, 
so what what they are saying is that if i have you know several number of pieces of the fruit apple so they are not distinguishable from one another so you know i have let's say there are four pieces so if i have picked the first piece or i have picked the fourth piece it hardly matters because you know you cannot distinguish them okay uh, and there are at least four pieces of each type of fruit in the bowl so as uh, so this is also a very important nomenclature of the problem so they are saying that they, they totally want to select four pieces and you have certain categories but each of the categories have at least four types okay at least four pieces so this is a very important uh, nomenclature of this type of problem okay uh, so i don't know if uh, like how you are planning to solve it okay how you are planning to solve it but uh, we can we can uh, just simple uh, simply try to count okay simply try to count so i can think that okay let me start with you know four apples okay and i will finish up apple first and then uh, you know i will go to other things so uh, next will be three apple and one orange okay so you you guys also can participate so i don't miss out combination or possibility so next can be like you know three apples and one pear right and see uh, only thing that is mattering over here okay only thing uh, that is mattering over here is that how many pieces i am taking right so uh, it is not like it is not a1 a2 a3 okay uh, so all the apple pieces are similar so let me go to two apple and two pear okay next will be two apple and two orange okay next will be like you know two uh apple one pear and one orange okay so i think we are done with like uh two two apple possibilities now let's to go let's go to one apple so it can be one apple one apple and three pear right one apple and three orange okay and it can be one apple uh one apple two pear one orange and the other way around that is one apple one pear and two orange right so is there any other combination that is possible which will contain apple just take a look and tell me no sir okay so now let's uh, complete the other one so apple is completely done so next will be let's say i pick up the pear one okay so first will be four pear then it will be three pear one orange so all our apple combinations are exhausted so i don't need to consider them again one uh, three pear uh, one uh, orange next i will be like three pear sorry uh, it will be uh, two pear and two orange okay then it will be one pear and three orange so i think combination with pear is complete okay now yes, uh, the last is you can have four orange okay so uh, you can understand that uh, this is so if you count i think the answer will come to 15 okay so uh, you know it is it is given like this okay now uh, think about this that if so i had only three type of fruits and i have a restriction of you know four pieces of fruit so probably that's why i could manually you know this type write them down right enumerate them 
and count right enlist them and count but if the number of fruits are more if number of the pieces allowed is more then uh, can i follow this no okay so this problem you know this problem is one very typical problem which is a uh, combination with repetition okay so today majority of the time we are going to spend on this type of problem okay all right so <clears throat> here is uh, here is another problem okay here is another problem and uh, what i want you to develop is that looking at a problem you realize that okay whether it is a permutation problem or a combination problem and then whether repetition is allowed or not there are several other varieties also which we will not go and complicate right now uh, but uh, just for uh, you know sake of your understanding let's first focus on this problem okay so how many ways are there to select five bills from a cash box containing one dollar bill two dollar bill five dollar bill ten dollar bill twenty dollar bill fifty dollar bill and hundred dollar bill so uh, don't worry about this terminology bill okay so you know in uh, usa you call the notes as bills okay and assume that uh, the order in which the bills are chosen doesn't matter so again explicitly it is telling that this is not a permutation problem okay that the bills of each denomination are indistinguishable okay so so what does that again mean that you know you cannot tell out or make out from one uh, one dollar note to another one dollar note okay and that there are at least five bills of each type so again the same pattern is remaining uh, repeating see select five bills and at least five bills of each type okay uh, all right so if i have to if i have to uh, now solve this problem okay uh, what can be some of the strategies so i can do a pictorial representation like this okay so follow this pictorial uh, representation very well okay so this uh, pictorial uh, representation uh, says that you know as if you have one one box for each one of these notes okay and ultimately what you need what you are going to do is you are pk bill okay and going to put it put it into any of the boxes okay so it can go to first box second box third box fourth box fifth box sixth box seventh box based on what type of domination you are uh, denomination you are uh, picking okay is is this part clear to you okay uh, so how many times i am going to put that there are five bills so i am going to put that five times over here okay so uh, that's how i i am trying to uh, go uh, trying to uh, you know uh, tackle this problem or solve this problem okay so that i am assuming there are like seven boxes each belonging to the categories right so type of objects when we try to generalize right and what i'm going to do is i'm going to pick you know any one of these bills so it can be a one dollar bill two dollar bill whatever it is and then i'm just going to put it into that box you now whose de denomination matches okay so uh, i hope this is clear to you okay so now how i can uh, represent this is uh, uh, follow this very carefully now uh, that uh, so these are some of the uh, some of the possible solutions right so uh, you remember the order so here it is not again repeated right so one possibility can be that uh, you have two 10 dollar bills and uh, three 1 dollar bill this is a possible uh, solution because uh, you know total number is five and you can go and repeat any one of them another possibility is that uh, and you have one hundred dollar bill, one another fifty dollar bill, two twenty dollar bill, and one five dollar bill. Similarly, there is another possibility over here. Okay, uh, but the uh, important point that uh, you know we want to uh, uh, make out over here, or we want to uh, do is that 
you can uh, you can put it in arbitrarily many ways okay there are so many ways in which you can arrange this okay so how can i arrive at a closed form uh, uh, formula for this right like like we have in permutation and combination so what we do over here is you know we think like this okay so what what we are telling so again this is this is a very uh, important uh, what i would say very 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 uh, uh, important way of notation so please follow this very clear uh, clearly so this uh, how many uh, nodes were there there were five seven. nodes five. right so seven types are, of nodes are right so they are represented by this asterisk okay and basically uh, we have taken just these lines okay so how many lines are there 1 2 3 4 5 6 right so basically i can think of that this entire scheme can be arranged like this so this is a corresponding representation of this particular thing this is a corresponding representation of this particular thing this is a corresponding representation of this particular thing okay so again uh, you know if i if i uh, try to generalize so how many type of objects are there if i think there are n objects n type of objects okay then if i think that there are n type of objects then how many type of how many lines are there n minus 1 n minus 1 right so these are like you know the boundaries that you are creating very good now uh, the next thing is that and and you have the number of objects so basically uh, the total number now is n minus 1 and if you have to choose r total r items then it is n minus 1 plus r right so and you think about this so i have actually n minus 1 plus r elements and in that i can anywhere put this r element so if i think like this that this is a problem where i have you know uh, so many position n minus 1 plus r okay and i want to choose r elements from there so you know uh, that will give me the number of possible ways do you agree <clears throat> so uh, in this case right in this case you have uh, total uh, so you can think of this like c11 5 by 11 because 5 plus 7 minus 1 okay so from that you get 11 and 5 because there were total 5 nodes right so c11 5 which is actually factorial 11 by factorial 5 into factorial 6 which gives you 462 okay so somehow now we could uh, we could come to a closed form of this problem okay. let's proceed further okay so basically i should not give you the solution just one minute yeah yes <clears throat> so suppose uh, that a cookie shop has four different kind of cookies okay how many different ways can six cookies be chosen assume that only the type of cookie and uh, not the individual cookies or the order in which they are chosen matters okay uh, so how how can we do this problem now Since we have so four, four different, different cookies. cookies, so three will be there. N minus one would be three, and we have to choose six. So n minus one plus r that is nine. So nine c three. Sorry, nine c six. 
actually it doesn't matter right so it it will be 9c3 or 9c6 it is the same thing because you can think that you are you are choosing the position of the sticks or you can think that you are choosing the position of the asterisk right so it's one and the same thing okay uh so now uh uh of course you are right so it is c96 or c93 or so it's 84 ways okay mm, however one uh, you know particular condition was missing okay can you tell me which condition it was see it didn't specify one important thing that you know each of the uh, each of the type of cookies actually at least had uh, six uh, uh, cookies right so that is an important piece which was not there but anyway i mean that's a safe assumption to do but uh, we should be very critical about you know the, the different clauses uh, that are being presented to us okay now uh, let's see uh, another problem okay uh, so how many uh, solution does the equation x1 plus x2 plus x3 equal to 11 um, uh, can have where x1 x2 and x3 are non negative integers so you know there are there are three integers right uh, x1 x2 and x3 they are non negative so you it can have values from uh, so it cannot go in, in negative side right so max, minimum value can be zero and it are all integers so it will be like one two three like that okay so how do i solve this problem Sir, is it like 14 C3? Uh, so don't uh, like give me the answer. <laughs> Tell me the logic of that. N equal to uh, 12 because 0 to 11 should be the possible values. Okay. If it is non-negative. And okay, uh, that's fine. Uh, yeah, so 0 to 11 are the possible values. Okay. But so if you arbitrarily take any three values, so I choose one, two, three, will it be a valid uh, valid solution? No. Yes. Anyone else wants to try? Okay, so <clears throat> if I if I let's say uh, go back to this problem, okay, just think about it. Let's say that so how many types of cookies were there? Four, right? So let's say I I represent uh, the first type of cookie as C one. Okay, the next as C two. The third as C3 and the fourth as C4. Are you getting what I'm telling? What I'm trying to tell? Yes, so I'm sure. representing. So I'm telling that, okay, uh, you know, uh, C1 is the uh, number of cookies that I have chosen from type 1. C2 is the number of cookies that I have chosen from type 2. C3 is, uh, you know, type 3 and C4 is type 4. And what will be the value of C1 plus C2 plus C3 plus C4? So always C1 plus C2 plus C3 plus C4 is going to be 6. six. Okay. And is there anything that I can tell about any restriction, any quality of the values of C1, C2, C3 and C4? Yes. 
we can tell that c1 c2 c3 and c4 are non negative integers right so then isn't it the same problem that we were dealing with only that now they have directly given an equation and told x1 x2 plus x3 equal to 11 okay so then what will be the answer Is the explanation clear to you? Yes, sir. So what will the answer here? So how many types of objects are there? Three. 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 And uh, so equal to 11. So how many sticks are there? So sorry, three type of objects. So how many sticks are there? Two. And how many stars are there? Three. Now, how many stars are there? Stars are the yeah. number of objects. 11. Right? So, basically, then it will be 11 plus 2 uh, C 11 or 11 plus 2 C uh, 2. Right? So, it, it is going to be simply, you know, uh, C uh, 13 out of 2 or 78. Okay? I, I hope the working is clear to you. Yes. Okay. Okay, uh, so uh, another another uh, is that when uh, you have permutation with indistinguishable objects. Okay, uh, so indistinguishable objects. Uh, so basically, uh, you know, the problem is how many different strings can uh, be made by reordering. The letters of the word success, right? So, uh, here one of the problem is that uh, you will see that S has come two times, you know, C has come two times, and so on and so forth. Or, sorry, S has come three times, C has come two times, and so on and so forth. So, <clears throat> if, if we have such indistinguishable objects, so what we mean by that is that I cannot distinguish, you know, one S from the other, right? When I have three S, okay. So if I if I if I have such a situation, then my number of possible arrangements, okay, is going to go down, right? Because I have uh, I have lot of lot of things, uh, you know, lot of things which are similar. So as example, you know, if I if I would have uh, fixed these four positions, okay, uh, fixed these four positions, and the I I just say that you know the last three position, I am going to put the three S, just for sake of simplicity and if you know if uh, so for for all the possibilities that are there in this first four positions okay for each one of them i could have i could have arranged these three in factorial three ways or six ways if the three s were different so if, if it was like you know s1 s2 s3 i could have done that in six ways but out of the six ways, I'm going to choose only one way. So out of so out of all the six ways, I'm going to choose only one. As a result, what I will do is I will divide the number of possibilities by factorial three. Okay. Same argument goes for uh, same argument goes for the C's, which are which are occurring two times. So I'll divide by factorial two, and uh, these factorial ones are just uh, for the sake of completeness okay that uh, you know it, it's more of a generalized formula so uh, mm, in this case uh, 3 plus 2 plus 1 plus 1 is 7 okay so number of uh, such possibilities or number of such arrangements will go down if you have indistinguishable type of objects okay and uh, if you look at the formula now Okay, so the number of different permutation of n objects where uh, uh, there are n one indistinguishable objects of type one, n two dis indistinguishable objects of type two, and n k indistinguishable objects of type k, then the possible uh, solution. Okay, then the possible solution is uh, factorial n by factorial n one n two up to n k, and you can also say that n one plus n two plus n k. Okay, so if you add them up, it will give you the number n. 
okay so that's about permutation with indistinguishable objects okay all right so uh, a question uh, now now let's let's look at uh, some questions okay so i think uh, we did uh, like the important parts of uh, permutation combination so we will solve some problem okay and then i will maybe ask you to also solve some more so how many strings of six letters are there so considering both uppercase and lowercase so uh, there are six valid there are six empty spaces we need to fill all those six spaces with uh, 52 52 possible inputs so 50, 52 to the power 6 uh, okay okay that's an argument but uh, generally you know you don't uh, really uh, uh, bother much about the case sensitivity okay uh, but i mean if you uh, in the in the strict sense that if we are looking at uh, if we are looking at a word right so cat in upper case and cat in lower case is same but uh, you know even if you say 52 to the power 6 okay so if i am examining your copy i will give you full marks right because your your argument is right but you need to uh, specify your argument very clear clearly that uh, you know you are assuming that you know both uppercase and lowercase are possible okay, okay. Sir. Uh, now uh, let's look at another so how many ways are there to choose eight coins from a uh, piggy bank which contains 100 identical uh, uh, pennies and 80 identical nickels so like uh, these are you, you can uh, think of uh, these are just as two type of coins so one type of coin is called as pennies another type of coin is called as nickel and uh, what what it tells is that you know it is uh, indistinguishable So there is a very, uh, you know, interesting set of problems, okay, where uh, you have this, uh, you know, uh, boxes and balls. So many permutation co combination problem can be actually modeled to this, you know, box and ball problem, okay, that you have a set of balls, why, what you want to put in a, uh, uh, put in a set of boxes, okay, and uh, basically, uh, the most generalized case is that uh, the balls are also distinguishable and the boxes are also distinguishable okay uh, and and then you can understand that there were there are four four varieties right so indistinguishable balls distinguishable boxes uh, you know index indistinguishable boxes distinguishable balls and then both uh, indistinguishable boxes and bo uh, balls so something of that sort but uh, we really do not uh, need to go there and worry about it okay uh, so so any any solution that comes to your mind
so if i strictly you know if i strictly think of uh, possible values of the number of pennies that are selected okay so let's let's think of that so how many possible pennies i can select to choose eight what is the range of the values zero pennies or eight all all the coins you selected are uh -huh. pennies so, yes. zero, so zero to eight zero to eight right so so then how many total uh, possibilities are there nine nine right now each one of this right and and uh, you agree right that when i choose eight pennies i can choose it in how many ways one way right if i am choosing five yes, i can choose in how many ways one one and how many ways i can choose the rest of the nickels one way so if i have fixed if i fix one penny the corresponding to that the seven uh, nickels that i am going to choose are going to be fixed right are you getting what i am saying yes sir yes sir so then it is possible only in nine ways yes sir. right yes sir but but another thing that you could have you could have uh, tried to uh, realize is that this is again the same problem what we were discussing so far combination with repetition only only change is that so i can always say that this is going to be x1 plus x2 equal to 8 right only thing that they have said over here is see what they have said that uh, number of pennies is 100 and number of nickels is 80 so essentially they have just told that it is greater than 8 right it is they have just you know given this 180 to uh, you know misguide you or misguide us so they if they have given 1000 uh, identical pennies and 800 uh, nickels it would not have changed the answer the only thing that is important for us here is that it is greater than 8 are you getting me yes so so now from that aspect it will be 8 plus 1 c1 so 9 c1 so 9 right so you could have approached that from from what what we have discussed so far okay uh now let's look at this particular problem suppose that a large family has 14 children okay including two set of identical triplets three set of identical twins and two individual children how many ways are there to seat these children in a row of chairs if the identical triplets or twins cannot be distinguished from one another okay so now they are giving more information than required so i first they have said that they are identical triplets then they are saying that they cannot be distinguished from each other so i think it is redundant information right you you for you, you just tell it is identical it is same like it is sufficient okay uh, so uh, what is this type of problem a permutation with indistinguishable objects correct absolutely so this is going to be a permutation with indistinguishable objects so naturally it is going to be like you know factorial uh, 14 by uh, three sets of identical two two sets of identical triplets so 2 into 3 6 so factorial 3 into factorial 3 and then identical twin so that will be factorial 2 into factorial 2 into factorial 2 and then two individual children right so you know uh, you will have something like this as uh, srijit correctly pointed out that this is uh, that type of problem okay uh, permutation with indistinguishable object okay all right now okay so how many ways are there to distribute six indistinguishable balls into nine distinguishable beans
so uh, first of all uh, what do you think this is a like uh, permutation problem or a combination problem So combination, so ordering is not important. Balls are indistinguishable. Right. So it is said that it is indistinguishable. So probably you know it is. It will not. It will not matter. Okay. Uh, so uh, if you should think little bit, you know this is this probably uh, becomes again uh, the same kind of problem that we are talking about, right? So when we talked about the bills, or when we talked about uh, the fruits or the cookies, you know they they were indistinguishable. Okay, and uh, however, if you think of the beans, so beans were the types of the cookies or the type of the fruits. Okay, or uh, the type of the cookies, type of the fruits, or the type of the bills. Right. So was the was the beans or the boxes in this uh, uh, distinguishable? Yes, they were distinguishable. Right. So again, it is the same problem, right? So you have you have nine. Uh, uh, so you, you have to distribute six uh, distinguishable balls. So it's like you know x one, x two, x three, x four, x five. So each one of the beans, if you think that that is going to have x one number of variables or x one number of balls, uh, then x one can have x two and so on and so forth. So up to x nine. So this is the same as solving x one up. Plus x two plus up to x n equal to six, right? And here also the same restriction appears that they are non-negative integers, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, now what it says is that how many ways are there to distribute twelve distinguishable objects into six distinguishable boxes? So that two objects are placed in each box. How do I approach this? So is it reason whole? Is it reason whole problem that uh, two objects should be placed in one box? No, 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 no. No. Ah, uh, basically, see, no. If it was a, it would have been pigeon hole. Pigeon will always we have will have something a terminology like at least. Okay. That at least this many are required, or maximum, uh, uh, rather minimum, how many people are required. So that terminology will has to be there if you are if you are looking at a pigeon hole. Okay. So it was uh, so it's an interesting problem because uh, you know once uh, you you choose. Let's say you have picked two balls, and you have picked one uh, box. So now, when you put, you have picked two balls, and you are going to put it in a box, right? So, does it matter that you know if you have picked the ball one earlier or ball two earlier? Are you getting what I am saying? What I am saying is that though it is saying that everything is distinguishable. Now let's say I have picked up two balls, and I picked up a box. So now the arrangement doesn't matter, right? Now the arrangement doesn't matter. Okay. Uh, 
like how the balls are chosen and picked in the box. So if it is B1, B2 or B2, B1, it doesn't matter, right? So we can think of that I can, I can, I can choose. I can choose uh, the uh, first two balls in 12C2 way, right? For the first box, and then I can choose the next one uh, in 10C2 ways, and then the next one in 8C2 ways, and so on and so forth. Right? Okay. So, uh, you know, that's how uh, you can you can solve it. Okay. Uh, so, one more question. Uh, this one, please, all of you try to do. There are 10 questions on a discrete mathematics final exam. Okay. How many ways are there to assign scores to the problem if the sum of score is 100? And each question is worth at least five points. Okay, just uh, try to solve this problem. I hope the problem is clear to you. Yes, sir. Are you finding <coughs> similarity with any problem? Yes, sir. Some of the scores will be hundred. So S one plus S two, likewise, uh, likewise S ten will be hundred. Right. That's one good finding. Anything else? So since my uh, each value, like each x1, x2, x3, x4, they have to be sir, greater than 5. Correct. At least. Right. This is somewhat is little different, right?
so also repetition is allowed because we can grade both multiple questions as 5 or 10 true then how So, x one has to be greater than five. Then uh, right. we should have we have to like uh, consider the situations and cancel them out where uh, my value can be zero, one, two, three, and four. So, but how? Like, can I can I can I change x one such that x one should never be less than five? Then yes, but then of in that case, of my course. entire uh, equation will be different. Absolutely, you are in the uh, um, like absolute right track. I can then uh, then I can say that x one instead of x one I can write x one minus five in uh, in case of x two I can write x two minus five, so on and so forth. So if I write that. I'll get sir uh, like x1 plus x2 x3 dot 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 x10, uh, but all the minus terms will be there like minus how much? Five into ten minus fifty. That should be equal to hundred. Like, am I making sense? No. Uh, you started uh, with. Uh, like sir, if I say like when okay. I said so, it, so let me let me go back here, right? Yeah. So, uh, uh, so let me, uh, you know, make make this problem first, first simple. So let's say, so I always told you, right, that you make the problem simple. So let's say there are not ten questions; there are three questions, right? So Q one plus Q two plus Q three is equal to. Hundred, right? Now this type of problem we have done earlier. There is no problem with that. But only issue is that they have said that Q one is greater than equal to five. So, so I was right? saying that in in place of Q one, Q ten, Q three, in order to yes, uh, compensate yes, yes, for that so five. Right, right. So you are right. So what I now tell is that okay, I don't know how to solve this problem. So I can I can say that okay, Q one minus five is greater than equal to zero, isn't it? I can say this. Yes, sir. And uh, similarly, I can I can say for all other. So if I now think of uh, putting it, so let me call this q1 minus phi, uh, 5 as a new variable, which is p1. Is it OK? I can tell that. So it becomes that you know q1 minus 5 plus q2 minus 5, right? So on and so forth, OK? So it will be less than what? It will be less than, so minus 5 I need to do from here also. So it will be 85. So essentially this equation will become P1 plus P2 plus P3 equal to 85. Is it clear to you? And what are the variables P1, P2 and P3? They don't have any restriction like you know, it has to be greater than 5 anymore. Okay because I have changed them to this type of variable. 
so if i if i have now 10 questions naturally it will be p1 plus you know up to p10 and uh, that will be equal to 50 right yes so uh, as as i was telling that you know today's today's main focus was uh, to give you uh, give you idea about how you can solve this particular type of problem and this is a very very interesting problem okay very very interesting problem and you will see that it is uh, you know manifested in different form right so we have already seen this uh,